Hello friends, I am Dr. Vijay Prakash and today I will be talking to you about retainers in fixed dental processes. Now retainers are those part of the uh, fixed partial dentures which connects the pontic and are bonded onto the abutment teeth. So these are retainers which, which are bonded onto the abutment tooth that is the prepared abutment tooth and which connects the pontic that is the part of the fixed partial denture. So by definition a retainer is any type of device which is used for stabilization or retention of the processes. Now classification of retainers. On the basis of location you have three types of retainers. One is the extra colon retainer which is basically uh, encircling all or remaining part of the tooth structure as you can see. It can be in the form of a crown where you have the prepared surface, the entire surface is prepared and over that you have to bond this type of um, restorative material that, that may be in the form of crown, it could be a partial veneer or a full veneer crown. And apart from this you have the intracolon retainers like the uh, inlays or the onlays which, which take support from within the contours of the tooth and apart from that so these are inlays or onlays, they can be intracolon retainers and third type of retainer is radicular retainers which are taking support from the root portion. So these are three types of retainers. Now they can also be classified on the basis of type of material used. So it depends uh, what type of material we are using for making the retainers. It could be an all ceramic material or all metal material or metal ceramics or an all acrylic type of material. So there are different requirements for a retainer. If we talk about an ideal retainer, what are the requirements for an ideal retainer? One, the most important one is retention quality. It should have a very good retention. For that, the axial uh, walls of the preparation should be as parallel as possible in order to provide good retention to the functional forces and another thing is uh, the factors which can affect the retention of the uh, retainer can be the length of the edentulous span, greater the length of the edentulous span, more the stress on the abutment tooth and greater the requirement for retention of the processes. Then you can have what is the type of design uh, which you select for that particular uh, as, as a retainer. It could be a partial veneer crown or a intracolonial retainers what type of design is you are selecting that can also influence the retention quality apart from that the surface area whether it is a small uh, crown or a larger crown that will also be a factor which will affect the retention of the retainer apart from that in an ideal retainer you look for good strength the, an ideal retainer should have adequate strength to resist deformation under functional forces and uh, this is one of the very important requirement Apart from this, the biological factors that uh, whenever you are talking about a retainer that is the annual retainers, uh, we should be able to preserve the tooth structure and um, the restoration that is the retainer should, there should be no gap where the retainer is meeting the tooth structure. So there should be no gap here because that will uh, allow plaque accumulation and the patient will have periodontal problems and that will lead to failure of your fixed partial denture. Another requirements are your aesthetic requirements. So any retainer which is there it should be aesthetically pleasing. It should match the pontic or the uh, adjacent natural tooth and apart from this an ideal retainer should be also easy to prepare. So how do we decide what type of retainer we are going to use in a particular situation. So selection of the retainers, they are based on certain factors. One factor can be presence and extent of caries. So that will be determining what type of retainer we will be using. If you have small and shallow caries, you can, uh, you can use an intracoronal retainers. But if you have large and extensive caries, then that will require extra coronal retainers. Like in this case, if we have large extensive caries on such teeth, then it is better to go for an extra coronal retainers which, which is uh, taking support from the entire tooth rather than confining it to uh, the internal walls of the preparation. Another factor can be the condition of the abutment tooth. 
लाइक द हाइट और द मीडियो मीजो डिस्टल विथ ऑफ द टोथ द लोकेशन ऑफ द टोथ इट वेदर इट इज इन द एंटीरियर रीजन और पोस्टीरियर रीजन द पेरोडोंटल स्टेटस एंड द एंगुलेशन वॉट इज द टेल्ट ऑफ द टोथ सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन दैट वी हैव टू सेलेक्ट वॉट टाइप ऑफ रिटेनर वी आर गोइंग टू यूज इन अ पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन which will be helpful in uh, selection of the retainers is the functional relation of the adjacent gingival tissues uh, that is the axial contour of the natural tooth position of the contact areas and the embrasure spaces you can see the embrasure spaces the contact areas so these will definitely influence in in deciding whether what type of retainers whether we are we want to select the external coronal retainers or the intracoronal retainers if we are using an extra coronal retainers then they are going to maximally alter the contour of the tooth because they are covering the entire surface of the tooth so that is the embrasure area the contact area everything is going to change and if we talk about an intracoronal retainer so they are going to minimally alter such type of factors another factor is the available intraocclusal space that is the amount of interas space intraocclusal space between uh, the opposing teeth that will also determine what type of retainer we are going to select another thing is what type of material we are going to use uh, for pontic that will also influence what type of retainer and what type of preparation you are going to do on the uh, on the adjacent tooth that is for the for the retainer uh, like if you are using an all ceramic uh, material then your preparation is different and then if you are using a all metal prepare all metal uh, material so the type of material will also greatly influence what type of retainer you are going to use another uh, very important aspect is the periodontal condition of the abutment tooth which is very important because if you have uh, periodontal problems and uh, suppose the patient is having advanced generalized chronic periodontal problem that will lead to gingival recession bone loss and even mobility so in those cases it is always better to go for a splinting type of uh, a res a restoration or where in you are going you are providing some kind of splint in your um, treatment plan another factor which can influence the selection of retainers are the position of the tooth uh, if it is in the anterior region uh, where aesthetic is the primary concern there in those cases you can prefer go for a partial veneer preparation and uh, if it is in the posterior region then in those cases you can go for a full veneer type of uh, your retainers apart from this occupation age and sex of the patient also determines what type of retainers you can go for like for example if you have a younger patient then you should avoid going for an extra coronal retainers because the pulp ones are higher in younger patient and if you are giving such type of retainers then the patient will have sensitivity that is the post operative sensitivity and that may lead to failure of the uh, your treatment another factor is your uh, morphology of the crown of the abutment tooth which will also determine what type of retainers we are going to use like for example if you have pack shaped laterals as you can see in the figure then in those cases you can go for an extra coronal retainers which will uh, not only cover these type of uh, teeth and they are going to alter the morphology of the tooth and provide a better uh, aesthetics so these are all the factors which uh, will help in determining what type of retainer we want to select whether uh, extra coronal or intracoronal or radicular type of retainers now discussion of each individual type of extra coronal retainers are discussed elsewhere and also type of intracoronal retainers will be discussed separately so thank you for watching the video